Here we are back on switch two, our non-root of our two switches, and we're going to look at these timers, hello time, max age, and forward delay. We see the values here, and they have to be the defaults because we haven't changed them. The hello time is 2 seconds, the max age 20 seconds, and forward delay 15 seconds. We need to know exactly what's going on with each of those, though. So first, let's, uh, let's see if iOS help is of any help. And uh, not really, move that up just a tad. And you can see that forward time is defined as setting the forward delay. Hello time is set the hello interval. And max age is set the max age interval. I think we need to know a little bit more about those three values than what we're seeing here. Certainly knowing how to change them is important, but we better know exactly what they're doing. That hello time defines how often the root bridge originates those hello BPDUs or configuration BPDUs. And the default setting there, as we saw, is two seconds. Note that it's the root bridge that originates the BPDU, and the non-roots are going to forward it. They're going to receive it, accept it, look at it, forward it. And we're going to come back to that concept. So again, keep in mind that it's the root bridge and the root bridge only that is actually originating the hello BPDUs. Forward delay, this is built in to help avoid switching loops. And it's the length of the listening and learning port stages. Remember, we saw those two between blocking and forwarding. We talked about how we don't go straight from blocking to forwarding because of the problem of a potential switching loop. Each stage is 15 seconds. So when you change the forward delay, you are changing the length of both the listening and the learning stages. So you're looking at 30 seconds overall there by default, 15 seconds in each stage. Now, max age. That's how long a switch retains the superior BPDU's contents before discarding it. So if the BPDU's that it has received, it says, okay, this one's from the, this is superior, then I'm going to keep the contents of it for 20 seconds. So that shouldn't cause any trouble if the root is actually originating them every two seconds, even if you build in a little bit of transmission or forwarding delay. Uh, along the way, not to be confused with the actual forward delay state. So we've got three values here. You definitely need to know what those default timers are and what each one does. We can change them. We almost did just now on I with uh, the iOS helps help, and we will change them in just a moment, but a word about doing so. These values were not pulled out of a hat or anywhere else. They are highly efficient. And what they do, they let STP perform its job with minimal delay, which we're always interested in, of course, while preventing switching loop formation during port transitions, which is what we're really interested in. You should not change these unless you have a really, really good reason for doing so. Now, that is obviously very important, but here's an operational note. For the change to take effect, the timers have to be changed on the route. You can change them on a non-root and the switch won't say a word to you. At least I don't think it will. We'll find out in a minute. But these changes really won't have any effect unless the switch you're on becomes the root. Sounds bizarre, right? Well, we're going to test that. We can't just let that slide. We're going to test that. I also want to show you what the options are as far as the number of seconds you can set these to. I wouldn't worry about memorizing them, but there's one very important point. We'll start with forward delay. And we know our default there is 15 seconds. We know exactly what it does. It the, defines the length of the listening and the learning states. And what did I do wrong? I put delay there instead of time. Ah, and you let me do that. Notice the number of seconds for the forward delay timer. The most interesting thing isn't necessarily that it's a maximum of 30, but it's a minimum of four. Because a lot of times with iOS help, when you use that, you know, you've got a numeric range, it'll be zero through 20 gazillion, something like that. I mean, it'd just be ridiculous range. And here you don't get the ridiculous range because they don't want you really making STP, changing the timers more than this. They really don't want you to change them at all. But in case you have to, here's how you change the forward time. But again, you can't set it for less than four seconds. And if this is your learning and your listening state, that's going to be eight seconds total. But again, it's built in so you can't just say, okay, just disable those states. Because a lot of times with Cisco commands, as we've seen and will continue to see, if you set a value to zero, what you are in doing really is disabling whatever it is you're working with. But you can't disable forward time. You can just move it down to four seconds. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and go with uh, 22 seconds there one and we'll go with hello time. I'll go ahead and type the whole thing out. And notice the value here is one through 10. 
number of seconds between generation of config BPDUs, which again is the official name for them. We call them hello BPDUs as well because they're kind of serving as a keep alive. So one to 10 seconds. So I'll just set that to three. And I believe we have one left and that's max age. And notice this one is six to 40 as well. The maximum number of seconds of the information in a BPDU is valid. So if we kept going with iOS help, it gave us some good information here. But the most important thing to note is you can't set any of these to zero. You can't disable them. So uh, we'll just go ahead and set that to 17. And now that I've done that, we will run show spanning with two ends there, VLAN one. And we see some changes but not maybe as many as we expect. Now, nothing changed as far as the root port or forwarding or blocking or port selection, anything like that at all. But notice that the hello time and the max age and the forward delay changed under bridge ID, but not under root ID. And that's actually where you have to change them for them to be taking effect. You have to go over to the root and do it. And notice that while I was configuring those, didn't matter. You know, the switch didn't say, hey, you can't do that because this this switch would become the root if, say, switch one disappeared and maybe another switch came online that had an inferior bid compared to switch two. So the switch will let you change them, but they're not going to take effect throughout the network. You have to go over to the root and do that. So uh, let's just go ahead and do that just for shins. And again, you can't see these commands often enough. And we'll just set that to 28. Hello 4 and spanning VLAN 1 max 15. So you'll see here, since we're on the root, the root values and the bridge ID values both changed. And that makes perfect sense because the root is the local device. You're going to see the same hello, max age, and forward delay times again. But again, not something, not values we change often. They're great commands to know if you're a CCNA exam. I certainly admit that. I'd be astonished if they didn't show up somehow. But the thing is, in real world networking, I'd leave those timers alone unless I had a really good reason to change them. And when you do, you have to change them on the root. And what we're going to see in a later lab is we're going to have a primary uh, root and a secondary root. And what we could have is, say, five switches, and we definitely want switch A to be the root, and if switch A goes away, we want this other switch, switch B, to take over. If you have that configured, it's not required. But if you have a primary and a secondary configured, you want to change the timers on both of those. So in case the secondary becomes the primary, your timers will remain in effect. I know that's a lot of talking and configuring for something I sit here and keep telling you, hey, you're probably never going to change these. But on exam day, I think they're excellent values and commands to know. So we will step away from that. Coming up, we're going to start talking about that port cost that we saw in the last video. And we'll get back on the live equipment for some more labs coming up next.